Last example, last slide. Um, two groups of canoeists meet in the middle of a lake. After a brief visit, person, person one, one pushes, pushes on, on person, person two, two with a force, force of 41.6. 41. 41. Okay, you know what? So, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm going to wait on this. This, this is a collision. This is a collision, isn't it? it? So, we're so going to wait on this one. So, we are actually so done. So, we just have to do through example eight. eight. So, I'm going to stop here, and you need to watch this to your notes and be ready to work on homework one next time. Okay, so today we're going to pick up with example nine here. We've got the two canoeists. You've just read that. Uh, heard me talk about that in part a it says find the velocity each canoe moves after 1.2 seconds of pushing all right so the velocity of the canoe after 1.2 seconds of moving what we know is we've got a force of 46 newtons remember momentum is force times time don't we well we've got a time of 1.2 seconds so if we take that 4.6 or that 46 excuse me and we multiply by 1.2 we get 55 point, what do we get? 55 point what? Hang on. I got this. 55.2, okay? All right, so we've got a momentum of 55.2. All right, so what do we know though? Cause we're gonna kind of move around and look at this a little bit. What do we know? The, the, this guy, if they're both sitting at a rest, if this guy pushes that guy, then what's going to happen to the two canoes? I want you to think about it. If he pushes off, this guy's going to go this way, but equal and opposite, this guy's going to go that way, isn't he? So what we're going to find out is we've got the same momentum for both of them. So we can go ahead and answer part B as they're both going to have the same they're just going to be in opposite directions. Okay, so what is the momentum of each canoe? Well, we just said. So for canoe one, if we call this canoe one and this canoe two, so this was part B. Part C, and we'll come back to part A. In part C, what we know is that if we consider canoe two is going forward, so the momentum of canoe two is going to be positive. It's going to be positive 55.2. Carol Mears Douglas. The momentum of canoe one, however, is going to be negative 55.2 because it's going in the opposite direction. So now let's come back to, well, we can actually finish D and then we'll come back to A. What's the momentum of both canoes before they pushed off? So before they were both sitting still, weren't they? So before the total momentum is zero. Well, after the total momentum is gonna be the momentum of one plus the momentum of two. So what do we find out? That's gonna be positive negative 55.2 plus positive 55.2 we're gonna end up with a total momentum again of zero afterwards as well. So what we find out is that the momentum we started with is the momentum we end up with. All right, so let's go to part A again. So in part A, we wanna find the velocity of each canoe after it moves 1.2 seconds. All right, so we know that canoe one has a momentum of negative 55.2, okay? That's going to be equal to the mass of canoe one times the velocity of canoe one. All right, so we know the mass. Canoe one's mass is 130. So that means if we divide both sides, what we get is a velocity of negative 0 0.42 meters per second. Now, canoe two has a positive momentum because it's going forward to the right. So it's equal to the mass of two times the velocity of two. Well, we know the mass of two as well. So that 55.2 is gonna be equal to 250 times the velocity of two. Divide both sides by 250 and we get the velocity of two is gonna be 0.22 meters per second. 
So what we have here is we have um, one of them going one direction, the other going the other direction, which makes sense. If you're sitting in the water and you push off on something, it moves and you move. All right, so conservation of momentum. What we found in this last problem was that the momentum we started with is the momentum we end with. In other words, momentum is conserved. Okay, not only is momentum conserved, if we have an elastic collision where things bounce off each other, they come together. So this guy hits this guy and boom, they both move, okay? But also kinetic energy is conserved. This is only for elastic collisions because look what happens. If it's perfectly inelastic, that means they're gonna stick together Momentum is conserved, but guess what isn't conserved? Kinetic energy is not. Okay, so the only time kinetic energy is conserved is if it's elastic. So let's do this. If we look right here, we've got this idea about energy and momentum. I want you to look at all of these. If we have a general inelastic collision, they bounce off each other. If we have a perfectly inelastic collision, they stick together. If we have an elastic collision, they bounce off each other. And if we have an explosion, objects break apart. And we're gonna talk about every one of these cases, not today, but over the course of this unit on momentum. I want you to notice about conservation of momentum for every one of these four cases, momentum is conserved. So momentum is always conserved. But look at the conservation of energy. No for general, no for perfectly inelastic, no for explosion, when's the only time it's conserved? Elastic. So this is never conserved except when it's elastic. In other words, if one thing bounces off another, if they stick together at all, then it ain't gonna happen, okay? So only time you can say conservation of energy also happens is when you have, when it says it's elastic. If it says inelastic or it implies a collision that sticks together or something that explodes, doesn't work, okay? So this is the big deal right here. Elastic collision, objects bounce off each other. Yes, conservation of momentum. Yes, conservation of energy. All right, so moving on, let's look at our perfectly inelastic collision example. So if we've got two cars, perfectly inelastic, colliding together, they stick together. That's how we know it's perfectly inelastic. That's what perfectly inelastic means. It means it sticks together. So we have the mass of car one. We have the velocity of car one. We have the mass of car two. We have the velocity of car two. Okay? It says between what speeds do we know the vehicle will be going? Well, I want you to think about that. If the two cars stick together, are they ever going to be going any faster than either of the cars individually? No. So what we're gonna find out is it's going to be somewhere between the two speeds they're at, between 17 and 23 meters per second, okay? How fast do the two cars move together? Well, that's a problem we have to actually solve, okay? So in part B, we know that P initial equals P final. Well, P initial is the mass of one times the velocity of one, plus the mass of two times the velocity of two, but they stick together, so mass one plus mass two are together times the velocity final, okay? So we just have to plug in here. So what is mass one? Mass one is 1875, velocity of one is 23, mass of two is 1025, velocity of two is 17. They're going in the same direction, so there's no sign change. And that's equal to the combined mass times the final velocity. And if we work this out, add those two together, divide by the total mass, we get a final velocity of 20, excuse me, 20.88 meters per second. Sure enough, that does fall between 17 and 23, okay? So we know that it's not gonna get any faster, but it's also not gonna get any slower. Perfectly inelastic collision. So let's look at another perfectly inelastic collision. We've got a 1200 kilogram car. So this is mass one. This is velocity one, 2.5 meters per second. Head along collision, this is mass two. 
6.2 meters per second is not velocity two. Velocity two is actually, since they're head on, negative 6.2 meters per second because it's going in the opposite direction. Remember, these velocities have signs on them. They're vectors. So it says, which way do we know the vehicles will be going? Well, I want you to think about this. You've got a heavier vehicle with a faster speed and a lighter vehicle with a lighter speed. Which direction is it going to go? It's going to continue in the direction of the heavier, faster thing, isn't it? So when this guy hits this guy that's going this way, the whole thing together is going to end up. So this is before. This is after. It's going to go in the direction of the one that actually wants to go that's bigger and faster. So before they were both going towards each other, but afterwards they're stuck together going in the direction of the heavier object. So we know these guys is gonna be going left, okay? If the vehicles stick together, what's their speed immediately after colliding? So let's figure this out. So B, this is that same problem. Mass one, velocity one, plus mass two, velocity two equals the mass of one plus two times the final velocity. So we're just gonna fill in 1200 times 2.5 plus 2600 times negative 6.2 equals 1200 plus 2600 times the final velocity. Work this out. Now we know what's going to happen is it's going to be going left, so it's going to be negative. So if you get a final velocity that's not negative, you did something wrong. Add, multiply, add, and divide by the total mass, and what you get is negative 3.45 meters per second. Now it says in part C, it says what's the kinetic energy after? Well, the kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half the total mass times the final velocity squared, isn't it? So this is going to be one half that 1200 plus 2600 times that negative 3.45 squared. And what we get is 22,614.8 joules. Now, it says, what's the total kinetic energy? Is it more or less or the same after the collision? Well, the kinetic energy after, final, this was initial. Um, I'm sorry. Before, that was final. This is final. This is initial. It's one half mass one velocity one squared plus one half mass two velocity two squared. If you plug into that, what you're going to get, one half that 1200 times 2.5 squared one half 2600 times negative 6.2 squared, but see now the negative is going to go away. We end up with an initial that was 51,472 joules. So what happened? It went from an initial of 51,000 to a final of 22,000. So what you should figure out is that it went down. Kinetic energy decreased. And that's what's always going to happen in an elast perfectly inelastic collision. Okay, so you can take that one to the bank. All right, so conceptual question. The next one is a toughie. This is one that a lot of people, even smart people get wrong, okay? This one says, which, what will do more damage to a car? Cars having a head-on collision. So you've got car one here, running smack into car two. Same size car going the same direction, same opposite directions. So this is velocity one, this is velocity two, velocity of car two. Versus, one car hitting a brick wall. 
it says which car is gonna which will do more damage to the car here's the thing if the cars are the same let's take this section first okay if the cars are the same mass mass one equals mass two and velocity one is equal to the opposite of velocity two then what you should figure out is the total momentum or the final momentum is going to end up as zero here in other words car one is going to hit car two and they're going to stop hard against each other okay Okay, so now, car one here, we've got mass one and velocity one, but initially it's moving. Only mass one, velocity one's moving. However, final velocity here, because this car's gonna hit that wall and that wall's not gonna move, final velocity is zero again. So P final is still equal to zero. It's gonna stop hard against the wall. So what does that mean? Guys, what that means is if the final velocity, in other words, the change in momentum is gonna be exactly the same for both of these. Same change in momentum. Okay, has to be. So if it's got the same change in momentum, remember change in momentum is F delta T, impulse is F delta T, that means that F has to be the same. And if F is the same for both, the force is what causes the damage, isn't it? Okay, same force means the same damage. All right, so the answer would be C, same damage. That's a hard one. All right, so let, let's look on to example 12, another perfectly inelastic guy here. Got two dudes running towards each other. Got a quarterback running the ball or a running back running the ball, and you've got a, a linebacker. This guy's our linebacker, and this is our running back, and they're running towards each other. Notice something though, this guy is moving faster and he's heavier. So if he's moving faster and he's heavier, what's gonna happen once they collide and stick together? Well, the guy that's moving faster and heavier is gonna push the other guy in his direction, aren't they? So if this is our before, then what we're gonna find out is our after is this poor dude right here with the football stuck to this dude who's tackling him, they are going to be going in that direction, aren't they? Heavier, faster dude's going to plow the other guy down into the ground. So what direction are they going to be going? In the direction of the heavier and faster Linebacker. Okay, so it says, what's the speed immediately after the collision? And B, what's the speed immediately after the collision? Well, that's going to be mass one, a uh, mass of the running back plus, times the velocity of the running back, plus the mass of the linebacker times the velocity of the linebacker equals their combined masses times that final velocity. We've done this problem over and over again. So we know this guy is 95 times 3.75 plus 111 times negative 4.1, don't forget the sign, equals 95 plus 111 times the final velocity. 
That means the final velocity should be negative because they're going to the left, right? That's going to end up being a negative 0 0.48 meters per second. Now C, it says, what's the initial kinetic, final kinetic energies of the system? Well, K initial is going to be 1 half mass of the running back, velocity of the running back squared, plus 1 half mass of the linebacker times the velocity of the linebacker squared. So this guy's 95, 3.75 squared, plus 1 half, 111 times negative 4.1, but that's going to be squared, so it's going to get bigger, isn't it? So this is going to be 1,600.9 joules. K final, however, is going to be 1 half the combined mass of the running back plus the linebacker times the V final squared. So this is 1 half 95 plus 111 times that negative 0 0.48. They're not going very fast in that direction, so it's not going to be very big. Leaves us with only 23.73 joules. There's a lot of energy that was blood out of the system, wasn't there? That would be the force, the impact trauma of that poor dude, that poor running back hitting the ground. Bone breaking, right? All right, more examples. And that's what you're seeing here. Wham, turfed. All right, perfectly inelastic. Now we're going to talk about a ballistic pendulum. I'm going to show you an example of a ballistic pendulum next time when we get into class on Thursday. And what you're going to see is what you, you can see how these actually work. The idea of a ballistic pendulum is that you've got a block hanging. You fire a bullet or some other projectile to it. It goes and hits it and gets embedded in it and doesn't move. So what happens is, as a result, this guy ends up swinging up to some maximum height where it stops. The bullet and together. So we've got before here and we've got after here, but here's the problem. This is an inelastic collision. That means uh, kinetic energy is not conserved. At least not for the whole system. Now here's the cool thing. We can divide this up. We can divide this right here so this is not conserved, but guess what? This part, once the bullet's inside and the masses are the same, energy is conserved here. But only in this chunk of it. So for the whole system, it's not conserved, but for the chunk where the bullet, once the bullet's inside the block, then energy is conserved. So let's actually look at part A. What's the velocity of bullet and block after the inelastic collision? Well, we know this one. This is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the clay. I'm going to say M clay instead of block because those are both Bs. Mass of the clay, velocity of the clay, we'll call this clay. And this is B bullet. Okay? And this will be bullet plus clay, won't it? Is equal to the mass of the bullet and the block, the clay block, times the final velocity. We've done this problem a dozen times now here. So 0 0.007 times that really fast bullet plus mass of the clay is what? The velocity of clay is zero. It's just sitting there. So this goes to zero. So plus zero equals 0 0.007 plus 0.95 times the final velocity. So this becomes a really easy problem. Now remember, why is it zero? Because the block is sitting still. When the, when the bullet enters the block in the beginning, this is moving, the bullet's moving, but this guy is at rest. Okay? So if we work this out, we get a final velocity of 2.08 meters per second. And it's stuck. Hang on. Don't know why. And we'll give it a minute. 
and try to figure out why it is not letting me write. My pencil died. All right, so I'm gonna have to write with my finger until I get my pencil recharged here, so this should be fun. All right, so 2.08 meters, let's see if I can, meters per second. Hang on guys. This is frustrating. We're almost done. So let's try this again. Maybe it's got enough in it now. Yep, meters per second. All right, so now, so there's the velocity of the bullet in the block. What kinetic energy does it have? So in B, kinetic energy is going to be one half the total mass of the bullet plus the clay times the velocity final squared, isn't it? So that would be one half 0 0.007 plus the 0.95 times that 2.08 squared. That gives me 2.07 joules. All right, so C, what's the max height? Well, this is the cool thing where we can now look at this and we can say, well, we can treat this like conservation of energy at this point, because now we're going to treat this as our before and this is our after. So for part C, mechanical energy in is going to equal mechanical energy out. Well, in we have kinetic and out we have gravitational because it's going to come to a rest. So we have one half mv squared, right? Well, we already know what the kinetic energy is. We just found it right here. So we just, let's say this is 2.07 equals m, which is going to be a combined m, isn't it? Mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times gravity times the height. So 2.07 equals 0 0.007 plus 0 0.95 times 10 times h. Add and divide and you get a height of 0 0.22 meters. Okay? Now, D. If the speed of the bullet was to go slower, so I want you to walk yourself through this. If the speed of the bullet is slower, in other words, if velocity of the bullet goes down, that means that the final velocity is also going to go down, doesn't it? Because that first in part A would get smaller. Well, if the final velocity goes down, then the kinetic energy goes down. And finally, if the kinetic energy goes down, then the gravitational energy goes down, which means it goes lower. And this is going to be the exact opposite. If the velocity of the bullet goes up, then the final velocity is going to go up. If the final velocity goes up, then the kinetic energy goes up. And if the kinetic energy goes up, then U gravitational goes up, which means it goes higher. Okay, that's following the math logic. All right. Back in the day, I used ballistic pendulum. I'm going to show you a ballistic pendulum. So you'll see a video in class. So here's our last one for today. Example 14, perfectly inelastic. All right. So if we have a perfectly inelastic, again, we've got this situation where we're firing a bullet. Remember, we gotta divide our problem up and we're gonna treat it like this is not conservative, but this is conservative. Okay? All right, so here we go. If it's not conservative, we can only use uh, momentum. If it is conservative, we can use energy. So 
for part A, it says, what's the initial speed of the bullet? Well, that's going to be mass of the bullet plus or times the velocity of the bullet plus mass of the block times the velocity of the block equals the mass of the bullet plus the block times the final velocity. Well, the block is sitting still again, so this is zero. That goes to zero. So what we have is 0 0.007 times this velocity of the block, which we don't know, equals 0 0.007 plus 0 0.95 times the final velocity. But I don't know the final velocity. That's where the second part of this problem comes in. This guy, however, for this part, it is conservative. That tells us that mechanical energy in equals mechanical energy out. Well, this is 1 half m total. V final squared equals mgh, which we know now. So we're going to find the velocity final here, and we're going to plug it in here. Okay? So let's do that. 1 half total mass, 0 0.007 plus 0 0.95 times the final velocity squared equals what? Silly. Equals the final, the mass, which is 0 0.007 plus 0 0.95, right? Times 10 times h, which is 0 0.22. Well, Guys, first thing I say is that goes away. It's on both sides. So if we take and multiply and figure out, we know that V final is going to be equal to a really, really big number, which is 284. I'm sorry, I got 287.1. Excuse me. One. Meters per second. Okay. So now I'm going to take that and plug it in here. So now I have 0.007 times the velocity of the block equals 0 0.07 plus 0 0.95 times 287.1. So if I multiply, add, multiply, and divide, I get the velocity of the block, the bullet, the initial, what am I doing? Oh, guys, I'm sorry. If you worked that out on your calculator, you'd be saying like, Miss Duffy, you're cracked. Because I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, reworking this, that would be 2.2 .2, um, times 2, so 4.4. .4. Take the square root of that. That's only going to be 2.10 meters per second. I'm sorry. So this is 2.10. All right, so now add, those, add these up, multiply by this guy, divide by that guy, and we get 287.1 meters per second for the bullet. That makes sense. The bullet's going fast. So, after the bullet hits the block, does the system lose mechanical energy, gain, or stay the same? So, for part B, remember, it's inelastic. So, what do we know about an inelastic collision? Energy goes down. Okay? That's it for today's lesson. Do your notes. Study free test.